Please stand. Our first name is Come Down, O Love Divine. 1202. Two. Come Down, O Love Divine. Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Good morning and welcome to church on this day of Pentecost. As we continue with our service, let us open our hearts and minds to the presence of God in our lives and in his creation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Yahweh is well, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself, there is no other commandment greater than this. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, 
what God has prepared for those who love him. He has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything. Therefore, let us in penitence open our hearts to the Lord, who has prepared good things for those who love him. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen all goodness and keep in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you trust, we praise you. of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through the merits of Christ Jesus our Savior who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. Please be seated. We start in my love praise this morning with number 315, 315.
We continue with number 57. Celebrate Jesus, celebrate number 57.
worship with number 532. The king is among us, number 532.
first reading is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost came, the disciples were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like a blow of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be the tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and had the kind of speak in other tongues. The Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God fearing the Jews from every nation. When they heard the sound, a crowd came together in the room and could spot because they each one heard them speaking in their own language. Utterly amazed we are. Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that each of us hears them in our own native languages, Parthians, Greek, and Indians, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Rosia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya, and Israel, visitors from Rome, both Jews and Converts, Syrians, Cretans, and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. And these are the reflects, they are as well. What does this mean? Some have a bit of one of them and said, we have had too much wine. And Peter stood up with them and raised his voice and the rest of the world. Fellow Jews and all people who live in Jerusalem. Let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are more strong, can you suppose? It is only nine in the morning, and then this is what was spoken by the prophet John. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. The sons and daughters of poverty, your young men will see visions, your old men will read dreams, even my servants, both men and women, will pour out my spirit. For my spirit in those days, and they will not prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above, and the signs in the earth below. Blood on fire and pillows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness, and will lead to blood before the coming of the great moment of the human world. And then we will cause on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now for our second reading. The second reading is taken from Romans chapter 8, verses 14 to 17. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received a spirit of sonship, and by him we cry, Abba Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are God's children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs of Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Yes. We start to sing our gradual hymn, O Worship the King, 456.
hear the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to the book of John. Glory to Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father, and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own, rather it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may bring glory to the Father, so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. If you love me, you will obey what I command, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counsellor to be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be with you and will be in you. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for your promise that became a reality for us on the day of Pentecost. We thank you for the gift of yourself, your most excellent Holy Spirit, your Spirit of Truth, the Great Counselor, May we who walk in the way of the cross be forever counseled by your Spirit. May we be renewed today to learn to love you, to serve you, and above all, to wait on you in all that we do. To the glory of your name, your church, and all your people. Amen. Amen. Before we sit, let us sing number 511. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh. Five one one.
Please be seated. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, even the Spirit of Truth. John 14, 16 to 17, a. Today, I wish you all a wonderful and a blessed happy birthday. The day of Pentecost is the birthday of the church. So a happy birthday to us all, and we shall sing to ourselves later on in the service as we thank God for this wonderful day. And um, it's also a day of many grace and blessing as we bring to remembrance the fulfillment of that promise by Christ when he was leaving us to give us another counselor, the Holy Spirit. And with the caveat that he will be with us forever and the spirit of truth. You know, there is a phrase that has been bobbing around for the last few years, speak truth to power. And um, in a sense, it's almost a vacuous, meaningless words because when you look at all the changes that has happened in the last decade, they even beg those that they kick out to come back <laughs> and um, continue where they were going. And, as, and have things changed for the better? You see, people say we are listening, but they can't hear. People are what? Listening. But their ears are filled not with wax, but with cement. Yeah? They are listening, but they don't hear. Oh, we are listening to you. Let's have this. No. You can listen, but are you hearing what people are saying? And the spirit of truth is so different to the truth that we are selling nowadays. It goes to the core of the issue and it makes changes. The Holy Spirit does what? It challenges, it quickens our hearts and minds. It challenges us to say, hold on my child. Is this what the Lord Jesus Christ will do? Truth in the world we live in. <laughs> It's very elusive, it's very fluid, as they say. It can be one thing today, it can be something else tomorrow. Today you can be told that this is a chair, and tomorrow is a drinking mug. That's how fluid things are. But the truth of God is eternal, immovable. And what God promises comes true. And so for generations, People have been waiting for the Messiah. He came to redeem us. But he didn't leave us bereft. He left us with the gift of the Holy Spirit. And to show throughout history, you know, the day of Pentecost is also called the Feast of Weeks. In the Old Testament, Leviticus 23, 16. You know, it comes 50 days after Passover. Pesach or Easter, and it's a celebration of the first fruits of harvest. And as our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified at Passover, the events in our readings from Acts occurred 50 days after his death, because the church, we are the first fruits of redemption. And so we are most privileged. History, the Lord has promised. And those promises came to fruition. And those promises are still ongoing in our lives because the Holy Spirit is there to be with us forever. There is a description in a reading from Acts about how it sounded like the sound of a rushing wind. And in a sense, that was for their sake. And it appeared to them as divided tongues as of fire and sat on upon each one of them. If I said to you, can you catch the wind? Can you? How do you know wind exists? Because you can feel it. Am I right? At times, not all the time. When it's very, when it's a lot of it, you can feel. 
but we need it to breathe and that is testament to it and so like wind that brings life the Holy Spirit blew into the house filled the apostles and fulfilled the prophecy of John the Baptist Luke 3 16 that our Lord will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire and you know what fire does it purifies you know in some traditions when you're about to plant and you you know about what they call farmers do what they call crop rotation I don't know whether that's still the name they, they call it crop rotation you plant for a certain amount of years Uncle George will know this and then you leave the ground fallow or you plant something else to give them um, oxygen and things like that on you know to the soil to get a good crop in some areas they allow the forest to burn or they set it on fire so that nutrients and all that can then come out and regenerate the land for planting fire burns away all those things that are extra that we don't need it purifies us from inside out the gift of the holy spirit in this sense from inside out it purifies us so that we can be in pristine condition to be able to receive the gift of god you know if you have um, if you look in your shower or bath you have them um, what do you call it that um, mastic that you put on there comes a time when it begins to leak you can put a new one on top but after some time you have to do what take everything out in order to make it waterproof and so Pentecost was a day the time of waiting renewal all of them together in one place in prayer was for them to be stripped of who they are then to be filled with the Holy Spirit and so our days of Lent were times for us to prepare is today to rejoice and now preparing to be really filled again you know fill me with new life and so we need to continue to pray for that gift given to us at baptism and and renewed at our confirmation the same gift of the Holy Spirit to continue to be your guide your counselor as you journey on in your life pilgrimage St. Peter's sermon focused on two prophetic themes the promised coming of the Holy Spirit and the resurrection of Christ we cannot and I repeat we cannot call ourselves Christians if we don't believe in the power of the resurrected Christ we cannot say we are Christians if we do not believe in the saving grace of the cross we cannot say we are Christians if we are not prepared to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us to feel us and to prepare us to love and serve God ourselves and our fellow brothers and sisters in the world around us The prophecy of Joel was fulfilled. And the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. If you look at John 16, 8 to 11, it tells you what the Holy Spirit is about. Let me read that out for you. And when it comes, it will convince the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no more. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. The Holy Spirit is there to do what? To lead us on the straight and narrow. You know, at times, you have choices before you and some of them are very difficult if we listen to the Holy Spirit we will be able to make the right choices and let us pray for those around us as they make decisions as they throw out words we are listening we are speaking truth to power 
that actually if you are truly doing that, we will have a more egalitarian society. There will be less war, there will be less famine, less violence among us. We will see each other as what? Made in the image of God. Until we move away from words and begin to live the resurrected life that Christ came to give us. Life in its fullness, not partially as we begin to live it right now. Then we will have missed the gift of Pentecost. As I said when we were mocking the apostles, the, the eleven, he says, no, we are not drunk. They could speak in all the languages and were able to share the good news of God with everyone around them. Go out today, go into the world, rejoice, be happy, share the good news. All we have is what? Good news. And when you have good news, you do what? You share that news. So let us go out into the world, rejoicing on this wonderful day, this precious gift that we have within us. It is in you. And like my usual saying, don't say, oh, I'm hungry. When you have a 50 pound note, somebody gave you a 50 pound note, you know, you wrap it up in cellophane bag or whatever, and put it in your back pocket or in your purse if you're a lady, and then you sit around saying, spare me some change. You have a 50 pound note in your pocket. Use it. Do what? Use it. All of us have gifts. Let us begin to use them. The Holy Spirit gives what? Gives each and every one of us different gifts. It says so. Prophecy, you know, um, good works, administration, prayer, hospitality. These are gifts of the Holy Spirit. Whatever your gifts are, use them well. You heard about Joel, you could prophesy. Use your gifts well. If you don't use it, it will die. High on sharpens iron. You need to go out into the world. Pray to God, Lord, what are my gifts on this day of Pentecost? Release them in me. Renew them in me. If it's been quenched, light it again with your fire, O Lord. Purify me so that I might be a worthy instrument of yours in the world around me. Once more. I wish you all a joyful and a happy birthday. And my gift to you today is the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's your birthday and I give to you the Holy Spirit. That is my gift to you today. Because on every birthday you have to give a present, isn't that right? So let us stand up and sing a happy birthday to ourselves. I think that would be wonderful one day. Happy birthday to me, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. That wasn't so difficult, was it? It is after your birthday. So, when you are going out, as you come uh, at the center of the Eucharist, pray to God before you receive. Lord, I am ready to receive my gift. And may God renew the gift of the Holy Spirit within you, now and always. Amen. And remember to use it well. Let us stand to affirm our faith in the world of the nice and great.
Let us pray. Let us with a gladsome mind praise the Lord for he is kind, for his mercies endure. He is ever faithful and ever sure. Father, we enter your gates this morning with thanks and thanksgiving. Your courts with praise. We are thankful unto you. I will bless your holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Receive our thanks this morning, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear. In this dispensation of joy and celebration, we thank you for our monarch, the Queen. Thank you for the journey. Thank you for your grace that has sustained her. Thank you for setting her aside and for helping her to carry out the duty over these 70 years. We commit her into you, O oh God, unto your hands to refresh and uphold her. And we pray for her the words of the psalm, 
establish the works of our hands, the works of our hands establish love it. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. As a nation, Lord, as we celebrate, we indeed sound the trumpet of Jubilee all around. And we will know your freedom, your ease, and all the blessings that come with Jubilee. We pray, O oh God, for your move upon this nation, that you will do that which you have proposed, especially in this season of mercy and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. So for us all this morning, we say, come Holy Spirit, we need you. Come sweet Spirit, we pray. Come in your strength and your power. Come in your peculiar and special way. Into our lives, into our homes, into our walk with you. But in this season, O oh God, the gifts and calling of everyone will receive a touch from you. Thank you, gracious Father, for giving us the strength and by the help of the Holy Spirit to be aligned with your will for us all. And we pray, O oh God, that by the help of the Holy Spirit we shall fulfill purpose. We're open unto you, sweet Spirit divine. And we ask that you shed your light onto every corner. Let no darkness stay with you. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you take full and absolute control. All of you and none of us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for the sick at this time. Those that we know. Those that are on hospital beds. Those that have been, their names have been written in that prayer book at the back. We pray at this time, the Father, they will experience your touch as Jehovah Rapha the Lord, our healer. Heal them, O Lord, they shall be healed. Save them, they shall be saved. Concerning them, Lord Father, we pray that they respond positively to every help and treatment that they have been given at this time, and that your name will be glorified. Lord, in your mercy, hear We pray for those who have experienced bereavement and loss, amongst us and those that we know. God of all comfort, Holy Spirit, we ask that you touch them. We ask that you speak to them the way that only you can. We ask that you minister your healing unto such families. At this time, we mention and we lift before you Uncle Paul and all the family members, that you touch them and be with them. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. As our children return to school, Father, go ahead of them. Be with them. Cover them with your Shekinah glory. And we pray for all the schools around here as well. That your presence will be there, waiting for these children. And you will help them, O oh God, with what remains of this academic year. We pray for all our children writing exams. And Father, we just ask for your help. That which only God can do for them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we ask that all of us, as we go into this new week, you go with us. You return us back to Zion to give you thanks and praise in the coming week. To you alone, O God, we give all the glory, honor, praise, and adoration, now and forevermore. Amen. Merciful Father, accept this praise. For the sake of us, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Also with you. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us, and as a pledge of what is to come, has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord be always with you. Hallelujah. 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 Let us share the peace with one another.
And our next hymn is number 290, 
we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all those in whom the Spirit dwells to proclaim the glory of your name, forever praising you and singing you. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of God. Great is the mystery of faith. perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather it one in your kingdom, all we share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the apostles and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ.
Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep this. We do not presume to come to this your table. Let us pray. Faithful God, who fulfill the promises of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of life eternal. Open our lips by your Spirit that every tongue may tell of your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out. And now for our weekly offer.
Let us pray. Heavenly and most gracious Father, we thank you for this money received and those received through the gift aid. Thank you, Lord, for the hands that have given this money. Bless their hearts, Lord. Bless their loved ones and their communities. And we pray, Lord, that this money will be used wisely in this church for the good of those in need. In Jesus' name we pray. Notices for the week. Once more, I wish you all a joyful day of Pentecost and a happy birthday to us all. And also, we have um, after the service our uh, Latin Jubilee festivities at the back of the church. So please do stay behind for some refreshments. And then enjoy yourself, rejoice, and be happy in the world. Let us stand. Please help me. The Spirit of Truth lead you into all truth, give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and strengthen you to proclaim the word and works of God, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest upon each and every one of you, and all your loved ones, now and forever. Amen. The final hymn is number 551. Nine minutes. 